For a considerable amount of human history, or at least the history where we were wondering what the purpose and function of the heart was, we were wrong about the function of these muscles here. You can see them highlighted in green. These are the anterior papillary muscles of the right ventricle. And we assumed that what they did is they pulled on these things called the cordy tendinii, which is a mouthful. Most people just call them your heartstrings, like you're tugging on my heartstrings. But we just assumed that, oh, this muscle contracts and it pulls on the string and then that's gonna pull on this cusp here. This is the tricuspid valve. Now, there's a bicuspid valve on the left ventricle, but we're gonna see that in a second. Um, but what we assumed was this would open the door because what happens is blood flows in only one direction through the heart. It goes from this structure here called the right atrium through the tricuspid valve into this giant open space called the right ventricle. By the way, this is an anterior view of the heart and you're looking inside of it to see the right ventricle. And then blood is gonna go through this structure here called the pulmonary valve. Then it's gonna go through the pulmonary trunk, pulmonary arteries, and then we'd have the lungs on either side. My point is blood goes like this. And that's the only direction you want it to go. If when the heart contracted, blood went backwards, that's a big problem. The purpose of valves, and that's what we're gonna to see today, and I'm gonna show you where basically the function of all these valves and what they're preventing. Um, the function of the valve is to prevent backflow. All right, so you want blood to go this way. So we assumed that this was kind of just these muscles were just kind of contracting and going, hey, I'm gonna open that door for you. It's kind of like, it's the gentleman of the heart. <laughs> right, it's just trying to open the door and blood is gonna go through. Well, in the 19th and 20th century, as soon as our understanding of hemodynamics and medical imaging started to rise up, we were like, that's not right. These muscles here are not opening the door. Instead, they're basically like some person desperately holding onto a kite in a windstorm. <laughs> right picture like just like holding like hold oh! like you're just sitting there holding on with is, is the best of your ability because when this right ventricle contracts it's so strong it wants to blow the door open and blood goes backwards into the right atrium and again that's the exact opposite direction you want it to go so what's happening is this thing is just holding on and going ah Every single heartbeat, do you know what's wild? Is that your heart beats around two and a half billion times over your lifetime. And that means for two and a half billion pumps, these little tiny muscles are just like, no, no, <laughs> right? which is absolutely crazy. And the respect is undying for these things, right? In today's video, what I wanna do is I wanna discuss just basically the purpose of these valves. What are they preventing? Because as interesting as these papillary muscles are, they're not actually there for this valve right here. This again, this is the pulmonary valve. So we need to figure out, okay, what is the differences between these valves? What are they preventing and everything that comes with it? And to do that, we are gonna be using one of Ken Hub's 100% free articles that we've gone ahead and left a link down in the description below. This is one of my favorite articles. It's absolutely massive. Um, and so again, we're gonna leave that in the description below. But our focus is going to be here. Well, let's start with this image. And again, this is the tricuspid valve or the right atrioventricular valve. But it's one of four different valves in the heart. And I think the best way to kind of introduce this to you is to look at it from this view. This is a superior view, but there's been a horizontal cross section made on the heart. So you're basically like you're cut off the top of the heart, but you can see on top of all four of the valves. And the first thing you're gonna probably notice is that two of the valves are open and then two of the valves are closed. The next thing you're probably gonna notice is that these two valves are a whole lot bigger than these two valves. And then the third thing you're probably gonna notice is that these flaps look a little different than they look over here. All of those are accurate and totally valid observations. So what we can see is there are three cusps belonging to this valve, which is why it's called the tricuspid valve. And then we have two cusps on this side, which is why it's called the bicuspid valve. Now it's also called the mitral valve. Um, so mitral or left atrioventricular or bicuspid. Again, this is anatomy. If there wasn't multiple names for a structure, I mean, is it really anatomy at that point? So I like to call this the bicuspid though. And that's how I typically teach it to my students 
because this one is more commonly called the tricuspid. And I think it just makes sense because if we have one, two, and three cusps, and then we have one, two cusps, I think those names make a lot of sense. But these are the atrioventricular valves. And what they do is they separate the atria, and we can come back down here, let's look at this image right here. They separate the atria from the ventricles. So from this view again, we can see that right atrium, which is where deoxygenated blood is gonna come into the body through the superior and inferior vena cava. So it's gonna come in through to the heart, I should say, into that right atrium. But there's also a left atrium over here, and you can see part of it. This is actually a specific part of it called an auricle, but we don't need to worry about that. But what's gonna happen is this is also a gathering center, right? The atria, that's their purpose in life, is to gather blood coming from outside of the heart. The right atrium gathers the blood coming from everywhere, right? I mean everywhere. It gathers blood coming from the upper body, the lower body. It even gathers blood coming back from the heart itself that the heart muscle used. Whereas the left atrium is going to be gathering blood that's coming back from the lungs. So we can also think about it as the right side of the heart is deoxygenated and the left side is oxygenated. So the atrioventricular valves are the two valves that separate the atria from the ventricles. Because if the atria are the gathering centers, the ventricles are the ones that pump the blood out of the heart. So you think of it as atria brings it in, ventricles send it out. And again, we want that directionality of blood flow. And so the directionality from the left side is once it goes through here into that left ventricle, we actually wanna send it out, let me get rid of that, um, out this massive blood vessel here called the aorta. This is the ascending aorta, then you got the aortic arch, and then it's gonna split off into different blood vessels here. Um, but you want blood to go that way. <laughs> you only ever want blood to go in one direction. So the atrioventricular valves are gonna do that. So if we come back to this image here, what's gonna happen is that's exactly what's happening here. So blood is gonna naturally just go through them and then you have those papillary muscles on the other side preventing blood from going backwards. But then we have these things right here which are called the semilunar valves. Now, specifically, this is the pulmonary and aortic valve. The aortic valve is this one right here. This is at the base of the aorta. And then the pulmonary valve is right here. This is at the base of the pulmonary trunk. And so these ones are a little bit different. They do not have those papillary muscles. Instead, what they do is they act like little flaps like this. So what happens is blood gets pushed through and they open. And then as soon as the heart rests, they collapse back together and they close off. And so that blood will just fall and can't make its way through. Right? That's, that's kind of the purpose of them. And you can see it from this particular view as they kind of collapse onto each other. Then the blood is stopped. Right? So... These other ones, like the atrioventricular valves here, the, tri, the tricuspid and bicuspid, those ones, blood just pushes through as the atria contracts, right? So if we go back down here and look at this, right? So as that atria contracts, it just, remember, we used to think that this papillary muscle opened the door. No, we didn't need that. In reality, what happens is when the atria contracts, it's just gonna push the door open. The door wants to open, it just, blows open and then the then as it shuts and the ventricles contract the muscles are making sure that it doesn't blow open the other way these valves when the ventricle contracts this is the pulmonary valve is gonna push it up right it's gonna just push it up like that and then when the heart rests the the blood collapses back down and it lands right here and it's not going to fall back in right so they just go just like that so we have the two atrioventricular valves, and then you have the two semilunar valves. The aortic valve is right here. That is at the base of the aorta again, and then the pulmonary valve is at the base of the pulmonary trunk. So we have deoxygenated, we have oxygenated, on this side is oxygenated, and this side is deoxygenated. So the point of this is very straightforward. The heart valves exist to prevent backflow. The atrioventricular valves prevent backflow from going back into the atria. The pulmonary and aortic valves prevent backflow from going right back in here. Because imagine if the heart rested, that that blood just whoop, falls right back into the ventricle. That is obviously not gonna work. 
You want blood to go out, not back in. That is the entire purpose of these valves is to prevent backflow. Now, an interesting thing I just have to mention is that these are also the source of the lub dub sound. So if we go back up here, lub dub, so when the when you know the doctor's listening to your heartbeat and they hear the lub dub, lub dub, what you are hearing is two things. You are hearing, watch this, see these valves right here? Slam shut, as well as the sound of the turbulent flow of all the blood just kind of <laughs> moving as that's happening. So it's like lub dub, lub dub. The first lub is the slamming of these two valves, and then the dub is the slamming shut of these two valves. So this is what's interesting from a clinical anatomy perspective. If you hear something wrong with the lub part of the lub dub, that suggests an issue with one of these valves, or maybe both. And then the, if there's an issue in the dub sound, then there's an issue with either or both of the pulmonary and, and aortic valves, right? So little nice little tidbit of clinical anatomy for you. Um, but uh, either way, you can actually think of it, it's a little romantic and poetic to me. The sound of the heart isn't actually the sound of the heart beating, it's the echo of the heart as the valves are slamming shut. Hopefully that made sense. And hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. Little things like that go a really long way. And while you're down there, remember, this is a 100% free CanUp article. You might as well just follow along, read it. It's an incredible article. Again, this is one of our biggest articles that we have here on the entire platform. It just keeps on going. It's going to blow your mind. It's going to absolutely blow your mind, everything that you're going to see here. Um, and then also while you're down there, leave us a comment. You know, we enjoy hearing back from you. Let us know what you thought about the video or what you want to see in future videos. We are open to anything and everything you got to say. But thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you next time.